Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 2020 Stone Virtual Food and Drink Festival. We can't be with you this year in Westbridge Park because of poor old COVID. But despite that, we're hopefully going to bring you a series of videos featuring demonstrations from some of our top chefs. We wouldn't be able to do this without the very, very generous sponsorship help from Lexus of Stoke, who again have agreed to provide sponsorship for us for this and for last year, and I believe for next year. They've been great friends, great partners. We thank them very much. Uh, and I'm sure they're doing free takeaways with every SUV you buy, you get a free mini with it. It's a fantastic deal, but it closes at three o'clock this afternoon. And we are also eternally grateful for the help from our friends at Joel's Brewery, Steve and the rest of the team, and everybody involved with the brewery. This is their project, the Crown Wolf Pub, the Crown Wolf Theatre, the uh, Heritage Centre. They're bringing life back into the brewing industry in Stone, and they have been great, great supporters of the festival this year, and hopefully will continue to do so. Uh, we are cooking in what will be the bar of the Crown Wolf when it opens next spring. And with me today is one of, I must say this nicely, one of the oldest friends and supporters uh, amongst our ranks of chefs of the Food and Drink Festival. It's Mike Hughes. Mike has retired I don't know how many times, and he told me that he's just come out of retirement yet again to start cooking at Harper Adams College. That's right, yeah. So what are you doing for us today then, Mike? Right, what I'm doing, Colin, is, is, is uh, uh, it's very simple. So I'm doing three courses, and we were just having that chat that hopefully are dead easy to do at home. Um, and so I'm doing a three-courser. I'm, I'm starting off with a tomato salad, which is very simple, but I'm just adding a little twist to it. I'm, I'm going to add to it a tomato consomme. Um, and then main course, I'm doing a a piece of sea bass just cooked simply on top of um, some crab linguine with that um, sauce around it and some deep fried savoy cabbage and for pudding a variation on a theme um, a lemon posset we all know and I just thought I'd try an orange posset which believe it or not does work. So you're making a consomme and you're doing a linguine no. The second dish. That is, and you call that simple? Well, I'm not making a consomme, I've made one. You've um, made one. Ah, here's what I made earlier. <laughs> this would last a day. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Yes. But anyway, Mike, right. please carry on. Okay, um, bear with me. Okay, so what I'll do first is, is I'll, because I'll, I need the pots for something else, I'll start by doing the, um, the orange posset, okay? So, quite simple. Um, I'll get some orange juice out of these. If you want, um, if you want to maximise your juicing, um, put them in the microwave first, okay? Yeah, I've heard that. You, I do that with lemons, so to warm yeah. them through a bit. Lemons, oranges. Yeah. Um, sorry, I haven't used this for a while. Now, this is quite a contraption, Mike, yeah, isn't it? <laughs> conversation. This has been in our cupboard for quite a long time. It's not a medieval torture no, instrument, then, no. Uh, but it's been in our, our cupboard, because one of the two of us doesn't like it. And it's not me. I've got a feeling that's it. That's it, there we are. So it's taking out, it's turning all the pulp to juice and taking everything yeah. out. Yeah. And I just need to do this first so as I know how much juice I've got. The idea of this is that I'm gonna blend this juice with cream and sugar. So I just need to know how much juice I've got because the idea is to do equal parts really of juice and cream. Okay, so let's get rid of those. Conveniently placed bin. Orange juice in here. Okay, and what I'll do, quite, quite simply, I don't know if the camera can see inside the pots, can it? I'll put an equivalent amount of cream in there. No, like all chefs, you don't measure anything. Well, so you've got about about that much. Equal cream. parts, really, yeah. And about that much of I cream. See, yeah. You do it all by sight. What I need is sugar. In fact, what I'll do as well, this will help the setting process, but won't really affect the taste. Some lemon juice in there. 
So you're adding lemon juice to orange, but it won't affect orange, the taste. Yeah. You won't really, you won't notice. It'll be a bit, bit sharp. But um, why is there more pectin in? in it's, it's the acidity. It's the acidity. Is so, it, yeah. Again, if I was doing a lemon posset, I'd put more sugar. And sugar, sugar's very personal anyway. So for for the orange, it's sweet enough. So about half sugar to orange juice will be fine. Okay. Um, and that will dissolve in the orange. Um, I'll move that over to the bigger flame so as it comes to the boil a bit quicker. Uh, so you're bringing both, both the orange yeah, and the cream to yeah. the boil? Both come up to boil. This is, this is where I say it's very simple. There's no point in me even starting anything else now because it's nearly there. Um, and now, this is, remind, this is double cream, which doesn't split when you boil it. No, dead right. We've talked about that before, haven't we? We have. About Ten years ago or something like that? Uh, we have, <laughs> yes, because I made a dish once where I just put cream in. Single cream will split, yeah, if you, if you boil but it. My so wife said, boiled. just whisk it back in. Yeah. I said, but I can't. It's not, wor it's not worked. No. No, once it splits, you've had it. Can I put that on there, can't I? Yeah, yeah, okay. Those are blended. And all I'll do now, I'll put that underneath, and when it's cooled a little bit, I'll pour it in its presentation dish, and you know, all will be well, hopefully. Obviously, I've got to um, chill it, and you know. I'll that will, and that will, that will, the, that will solidify more, that, that will set. Will set. Yeah, that will set. set. That's the word. That um, will set. I'll put it in our virtual fridge in a minute. Your virtual okay, fridge. That's right. So, main course. Um, Main course, shall we? Yeah, I've, I've, I've always thought a posset was more complex than that. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a very old dish, a posset, isn't it? It's yeah, it's, it's, it's very, it's very old, very old traditional. And traditional, and um, it, if I can do it, I'm not noted for my sweet talents. Um, it's, it's Please don't say if I can do it, anyone can. You're a professional chef <laughs> with 35 well, plus years' experience. Well, I used Mike. to fool a few people on like that, but um, it was a good one to give customers for. Um, a little pre-dessert, you know, it's quite a nice little simple yeah. pre-dessert. So bear that one in mind. Well, like, like, a, like a palate cleanser in between. Right? Yeah, yeah. So I'll put that on there. Sorry, you'll have to bear with me while I get used to this. And I need a fine dice of onion. This is for the sauce for our main course. So I'll quickly fine dice this half an onion. I peeled it first for speed purposes. See, the old knife skills haven't gone away, have they? <laughs> well, they've been... They're, they've been only domestic for the last um, however many weeks. How long is it now? Good grief. It sure is a long time, isn't it? Do you mean since lockdown? Yeah. We're talking about, what are we, March, yeah. September, six months, something like that? Gosh. Uh, a little bit of oil, and then we'll sweat this onion off. So if this makes a, oh no, if it makes a right old fizz, I've got the pot too hot. But. We got away with that. So I'll just get that sweating. I've got that pan ready to um, to do my fish. I'll turn that board over and I'll get the starter ready, okay? So, dead simple, dead simple. If those go black, Colin, give me a shout. Now this is the difficulty I have when he says sweat an onion out. Sweat it's on a low heat yeah, and low you, heat. you want it until it's translucent. Yeah, that's, yeah, dead right. You'd, you'd think you'd done this before. Um, so I'm going to go on that. That's the smallest ring. So Yeah, you just want it to, to do exactly that. Go translucent and soft. And it turns, basically it turns the onion from, onion's quite harsh, isn't it? Um, it softens up the flavour as well. So it's not really strong. Okay, so what we've got here is a dish and these tomatoes are all from my garden. Um, so you've had a good year of tomatoes as well, because yeah, we have, yeah. Very, very good year at all. It, 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 there's no rhyme or reason to it. I don't know if the same with you. Some years are good, some years are bad. But what I did, I planted a, a variety. So I've got um, golden sunburst. I've got tigerella. And I'm only, I would save these and make a sauce out of them, but it's just so as they sit nicely, just take their heads off, you don't have to. You can chop them up into lumps. 
Okay, and this is all just to try and look nice. These are garden pearls. These, what ones are you growing? Garden pearls? Yeah. Oh, well, I'm not growing them. I just do the watering. My wife's a gardener. <laughs> Uh, but we've had, um, she's had Gardener's Delight, a yellow one, which I forget the name of, and two tumblers, which have tried to take over the world. They have really? done so well. Yeah. We put them in hanging baskets on the side of the garage, and they have just done beautifully. But th that's them fully um, ripened. Those are yep. cherry cerise. They're, they're, they're they're, we, we've had one, which is like, it's a dull orange before it goes red, and that's it, right? And it's so sweet. Yeah. So sweet. They're very small, but incredibly sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's very satisfying, yeah. isn't it? That and cucumbers, again, have grown very well this year. OK, and I'll just finish that off with a raw, with a green one, sorry, um, which I griddled. And so what I'm going to do on top of that... But surely that isn't ripe, is it, if it's green? No, but it's a, just, again, it's a different taste. Um, I've griddled, so I've cooked. Yeah, yeah. So it's... Um, and I've got some herbs from the garden, um, which I've got the old um, Scarborough Fair ones here, the parsley, sage, rosemary and thyme. Okay. Um, you aren't going to sing along, are you? I won't. That's good. And if I, you know, I can I'm promise that to the viewers, can't I? <laughs> I wish I can even play it on the guitar. Um, so... But very traditional. Yeah. As we were saying about the posset, a traditional dish, yeah. Yeah, yeah and... Simple, but what I did actually, I was picking these just before I came out, and I saw that I had a bit of basil that popped its it sort of stayed around, so I just picked a bit of that as well. So it's not just Scarborough Fair, it's basil, it's so it's sort of Scarborough Fair meets Faulty Towers, I suppose. Um, that's quite a concept to imagine, yeah, isn't it? Yes, yeah. okay, and I'll just scatter that on those bit of basil on the top. And then I'll leave that, and just when I serve up main course, I will put the consomme on top of that, okay? So let's get that out of the way. Let's move that out of the way. I'm out of camera shot now, aren't I? Uh, I don't know where that belongs up there. Okay, so these are softening now, sweating. How long have I had? Good question, chef. Um, you were about 15 minutes. 15, right. That's so you're about halfway through. All right. Do you know, one very essential ingredient I've forgotten, those tomatoes. I've got some mulled and salt here. No pepper, but just some mulled and salt. OK, and I'll keep that. To cook me fish, I will... Try, you try and make your life a little bit easier by putting that um, that piece of grease proof on there. And the, uh, now, are these copper pans or copper coated? They're, no, they're non-stick pans. Oh, they're just gone non-stick. That's a copper one there. Yeah. Um, right, I finished using that for tomato, so I can use it for this. Um, I'll cut his belly off in my faithful bin, and then I'll just salt the skin. And this is a piece of sea bass. Piece of sea bass. Yeah. Piece of sea bass. So some people like crispy skin and some don't. But the good thing about doing it like that, you can always take the skin off, can't you? So on there, and what it means, this piece of grease proof, it, it's a kind of a bit of a safeguard. So I, I, I'm going to say it now, it shouldn't burn. <laughs> but you keep your eye on it, Colin. I've got to keep my eye on it. OK. I have cooked sea bass, but I've done it in a parcel, uh, in the oven. That's, that, by the way, people, is the best and safest way to cook fish. You can... Okay. I'm not competent enough to fry it. Those are cooked. Those... Um, let me get these right. Yep, so I've got a bit of brandy. Might as well use it all brought it in. A bit of brandy in your onions, yes? Brandy, yep. If we had a bigger flame... Could, yeah, there you go. So you can, you can actually set fire to that if you get hot enough. Um, that'll just burn off the... I don't know if Ben, our cameraman, can get that, but that is burning away, it yes. It is burning. As if it um, isn't hot enough here already. It's, bur it's burning off the alcohol and leaving the flavour, OK? In here, I've got fish stock and white wine. OK? And now I've got the liquid in there, I'm happy to 
turn up the heat. Turn it up a bit. Okay. And I can boil that. Now, if I might move now do you make all your own stocks? At um, work, we, we make the occasional stock. At home, I make one once a week from the chicken carcass. Yes, we will have a chicken um, stock, yeah. Well, once a week, that's, that's, that's a lie. Um, whenever we have roast chicken, I'll make a stock the next day, and then I'll make a soup out of that. And it's, it's, it's a shame to waste it, isn't it? Uh, right, so what I've got going on now, I'm reminding myself, I've got the fish cooking. Hopefully that will just cook away, um, crisp up the skin. When I want the fish, I'll turn it over and finish it off. I'll get this pot out of the way, because it's now... Skin side down with the fish and leave it. And so that should be crisping up. Um, and um, like I say, when I want the fish, I can turn it over and, and, uh, and, and finish it off. So that's reducing. I'm going to add to that in a minute some a tiny pinch of chilli powder. Now you don't want that to dominate at all, but you want with with this, you just want people to say, "Is that guy? What's that? You know, and, and I barely notice it. So one tiny pinch was three tiny pinches. It was yes, it was an amalgamation of three very tiny pinches. Um, and a bit of tomato puree. One thing you won't get, ladies and gentlemen, watching this, of course, is the aromas that are coming through. <laughs> it's not in smelly vision. One day someone will invent smelly vision, I'm yes. sure. They should do as well. But if you've been to the demos before at the festival, you know that smell that comes down the demonstration tent is absolutely beautiful. A little bit more stock in there. And then, so you judge it yourself, uh, you judge it as to how, what consistency you want it. So in there, we started off with the onions. Yeah, the onions. You've added the brandy. Yeah, brandy, some wine and wine stock. And stock. And then I'm just making it to my own consistency. But what I'm going to add now is the, um, the crab. OK. So a good handful of crab. Now, in my view, one can never have too much crab. I just had the pleasure of Brixham crab a couple of weeks ago when I was down in Devon. And yeah, try, try finding a, a Brixham crab roll in a pub in Devon. Wow. I came back from the Channel Islands yesterday where we had crab, I wouldn't say every day in one format or another, but there was a lot of it. All of it fresh and all of it absolutely beautiful. It's hard to beat, isn't it? Uh, when it's fresh like that, yeah. Well, so I'll turn that down a bit, I think. It seems to be going a bit over the top. Maybe I'll move it onto that. Okay, it's nearly cooked that fish anyway. Um, what I'll do to this is I will add cream. So those of you that are on um, Slimming World, ignore this dish completely. And then it's, it's um, linguine. Which I've cooked. I cooked it just earlier on because I didn't have enough pans. To, I realised I didn't have enough pans. Okay, so I'll just mix that in there. And this is just ordinary fresh linguine. Yeah, fresh Do you make your own or would you buy it? Well, there you go. I, when we had a, our pub in, in Suffolk, I used to make all our own pasta for the menu. I'm going to take that off the heat for a minute. Because um, that's ready, basically. Um, and it was a long, boring process. And it, it kind of, it's like, it's the same as making your own puff pastry. Why would you? So you can get some lovely products now from the supermarket fresh pasta and it, it's, it saves you all the aggro. If you wanted to make fresh pasta, it is, um, it's three eggs and 10 ounces of flour, which, which if, you, if you make it half semolina, half double O flour, you'll get a nice pasta. Uh, we've got a pasta maker, which has been in the attic for about 15 years now. And I think it's where he's going to stay, yeah. You, you have them right next to the fondue set, don't you? <laughs> And the canteen of cutlery, which was a wedding present. Yes, yes, I know, yeah. It, it always strikes me that the, the fondue set, you know, we, we'll, 
it would be banned now with health and safety. Very 70s. Let's yes. put boiling oil in the middle of the table and all sit around and have a nice evening. Yes. Um, but it was the so done thing then. <laughs> um, effectively, I think I could almost dish up. Um, so I did say I was keeping it simple, Colin. Um, well, will... yes, you have. It is simple to a degree, but it never it never is when you taste it. It's very tasty. And it's getting, as ever, Mike, is getting everything right, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And that's so the skill. What I'll do is I will... I will stand clear while you're dishing up some Take the linguine out. Linguine. As he spill, spills his safe there. Okay, then I will. Put my fish on top of it. I will put some sauce around it. Now I could pass this sauce. Which means you put it through a sieve. Yeah, but you'd lose the cra any crab that's left in it, so... You could blitz it if you wanted to smooth it up. Or you could just leave it like that. Okay. But if I was having crab linguine, I'd want it to taste like crab. Exactly. Yes. And then just to, as a, as a kind of an extra texture, really, I've got some deep fried Savoy cabbage. Um, a lot of people... Deep fried cabbage? Yeah, deep fried Savoy cabbage. Right. Uh, I say a lot of people, it's quite trendy to use curly kale, but there's a very good reason I haven't. And that is because they didn't have any Morrisons this morning. So that's the next best thing. But having said that, you're emphasising here, this is a dish you can cook at home with local ingredients from the supermarket yeah. up the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, um, so this is my tomato consomme. So the way, the way to make it is to blitz up some tomatoes with some Angostura bitters, okay? If you don't like Angostura's... Yeah, no Angostura's are, yeah. Then you hang them, so that's the amount of tomatoes, that's the amount of tomatoes I used for that. And then you just let it drip, okay? Don't squeeze it or anything, just let it drip. And that's it? Yeah, and then that, we can serve on top of that tomato consomme. It's just, it's, it's an unbelievable taste. It's a lovely, full-on taste. So, starter, main course, and oh, there's a bit of luck. My orange posset has set. Um, pudding. So that, believe me, people, that's exactly what I did in that pot, um, but I did that. It is, see. because I saw Mike do it earlier. I just got it out of the uh, this, uh, again, it's emphasizing again, it's uh, produce that you can get from the supermarket. That's all from my garden. For a special Saturday evening. Yeah. <laughs> and it isn't. Well, you say it isn't that difficult. Um, it takes a bit of skill, it takes a bit of planning, yeah. but it is straightforward. Yes, anyone can do it. So it, there's nothing there you need to be afraid of. You haven't, my, you haven't seen my culinary skills. Well, I'll tell you, the hardest thing there is, is the consomme, um, is to get it nice and clear. Thanks very much, okay. Mike, and I'd like Pleasure. to thank also nice to uh, Brendan and the crew for all the technical work, uh, Wendy and everyone else in the Kitchen Fairies, everybody at Lexus Stoke, thank you very much. Everybody certainly at the Jowls Group, thank you for the use of uh, this, for making this video, uh, and thank you for watching. There won't be a festival this year, but hopefully, ladies and gents, we will be back next year. Thank you, and we'll see you soon. You have just been watching freelance chef Mike Hughes. A massive thank you to Jowls Brewery for allowing us to film this video in the Crown Wharf in Stone. Please note this building is still under construction and there is no public access at the moment. The current proposed opening date is late spring 2021. Stone Food and Drink Festival would also like to extend further massive thanks to Lexus Stoke 
for their very generous sponsorship, which has enabled us to produce this video. Hopefully we shall be back next year on Westbridge Park for the 2021 Stone Food and Drink Festival. So put the dates in your diary now. The 1st, 2nd and 3rd of October. Hopefully we'll see you then and thanks for watching.